Hello Carnage Cravers, welcome back to Carnage Corner. I am Ken Carnage and if you're like me, you're super so you're super stoked for Captain America Civil War. Um, now, in preparation for Captain America Civil War, much like we did for Batman v Superman and Deadpool before it, we're just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, in Carnage style, we're just going to say, you know, I'm going to ask you, are you ready for Civil War? Well, if you're not sure on how to answer that, I want to just very quickly go through the other films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the films that led us to this point, starting with 2008's Iron Man. This, uh, this first foyer into the, uh, super, into the cinematic universe for Marvel, the first, uh, Marvel film, technically, it wasn't even, technically, I think Paramount distributed it, I'm not sure, but, uh, this was the first film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and uh, it actually it grew it grossed worldwide. It made over five hundred and eighty four million dollars, which is not bad for your first time out. Star the film starred Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, Iron Man, Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts, Iron Man's plucky secretary. Okay, and Terrence Howard as as uh, Tony Stark's best friend, Colonel James Rhodes, otherwise known as Rhodey. Yeah, you remember when Rhodey used to be Terrence Howard? Wow, it was a long time ago, right? So, that being said, uh, you know, this was the start of the MCU. This, this started everything. It was directed by John Favreau. Um, and this was really the film that started it all. Okay? Um, now, one of the things that I remember thinking when I watched it, because before this, not a whole lot of people were, were familiar with Iron Man. You know? But people didn't really know that character. He was a, he was a B-list character from Marvel. You know? He had really no... He really had no life outside of the comics themselves. You know, he wasn't getting cartoon shows. He wasn't getting movies. You know, it, there wasn't a lot of him. So, uh, I was familiar with the character, but a lot of people weren't. And I remember one of the first things I said was, well, this isn't how Iron Man acts. Uh, because Iron Man was not... They adjusted Iron Man's character, Tony Stark's character... To match Robert Downey Jr. a little better, you know. I mean, on one hand, like, on one hand, it's not who the character is. But on the other hand, sometimes, you know, little things can help with the success rate. So, uh, it's it's apples and oranges. It, at this point, it doesn't matter. Because at this point, they've adjusted the comic to match what they have in the movie. So, it, it, like, at this point, it just really doesn't matter. Um... But Iron Man was, it was a good film. It was fun. Um, it was different than a lot of what we'd seen before. And, um, I mean, personally, and I, uh, I give, I gave Iron Man a seven out of 10 because here's the thing. It's not, it's definitely not the best film ever, but it's good. And, you know, it's a good film. It's a very fair film. So, that being said, that was Iron Man. Moving on, later that year, that same year, 2008, we got The Incredible Hulk. Uh, the Incredible Hulk grossed about 250, a little over $254 million. Uh, quite a bit less than Iron Man. Uh, I'm not sure. I could never understand why it made so much less than Iron Man. Uh, the The Incredible Hulk starred Edward Norton as Bruce Banner. Um, it starred Liv Tyler as uh, Betty. Uh, the hell's Betty's last name? Damn it, Betty Ross. Yeah, Betty Ross. All right, and Tim Roth as uh, Blomsky, a Russian Marine who becomes the abomination and um it was directed by Louis Lettier. Now th th this was a great 
intelligent film. It was really good. The majority of the film dealt with how Bruce Banner handles this and how the lengths he will go to to try and fix it. And the fact that he wants it to go away. And that's where the drama comes in. You know, I, I think part of the reason that Ang Lee and whatnot didn't do a very good Hulk film is they're making a freaking, you know, trying to make an action film or, or you know, the, the Hulk is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That, that's what it is, you know. And I felt the Incredible Hulk film did that very well. Um... You know, that being said, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think that this film, its box office and everything else, really suffered from um, the leftover stigma from Ang Lee's Hulk, which was horrid. It was absolutely horrible. Um, so, but all in all, The Incredible Hulk was a very good film. Um, I gave it an 8 out of 10. All right, and moving on from there, The Incredible Hulk did not perform as well in the box office as they had hoped, so Marvel kind of scrambled to put out an Iron Man 2, which we got in 2010, and it grossed about a little over, about, it grossed over $623 million worldwide, okay? Uh, again, starring Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, bringing in Mickey Rourke, who was fresh off of an Oscar for The Wrestler. Mickey Rourke was, of course, playing Whiplash. And, of course, you brought back Gwyneth Paltrow. Terrence Howard was replaced by Don Cheadle. You know, and this was, again, also directed by John Favreau. Uh, I don't have a whole lot good to say about this film. The one thing I will say is it introduces us to the Black Widow, which is, of course, a good thing. Um, I don't know. This, this film just kind of felt like it, uh, it really felt like it didn't matter. It felt like it didn't further our story very much at all, you know. Um, it was rushed. Mickey Rourke's horrible. That horrible accent. I want my word. You know, it's just horrid. It's absolutely horrible. You know, even Sam Rockwell, as good as he was, like, I, I, I wasn't impressed with the Justin Hammer stuff. Like, just the whole film itself, I could have taken it or I, 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 I would have, I'd rather leave it. Like, seriously, you can go from, you can go... Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, skip Iron Man 2 and just keep going and you'll never know you missed a film. You know, so it's, it, it really like, I don't see the point to Iron Man 2. And it's easily the worst Marvel film ever made. I gave it a 5 out of 10, which is atrocious. Okay, and then, of course, in 2011, we got Thor. Now, Thor, Thor made a little over $449 million worldwide. Thor starred a very little-known uh, Australian actor named Chris Hemsworth as the God of Sunder. A classically trained actor Anthony Hopkins as Odin, the All-Father, and Natalie Portman uh, as Jane Foster. And, of course, this was directed by famed Shakespearean director Kenneth Branagh. Um, th this was... And when this came out, it was, at that time, my favorite Marvel movie. This was... It was so good. It was fun... Uh, it felt Shakespearean, gave us Hawkeye. I loved that scene where they introduced Hawkeye. That was just great. And and it gave us Loki. And Hiddleston's Loki. Like, it's funny. The You had... I think part of the reason it worked so well, because Chris Hemsworth, it's not like he was an amazing actor in the start. He was passable at best, but every scene he was in, he was in, he was in with somebody who was awesome. Yeah, he's in a scene with Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins is awesome. It elevates him. Okay? He's in a scene with Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston is 
outstanding. It elevates him. So it just really worked out quite well that way. So, um, yeah, and uh, I mean, if, if I could make, if I was gonna make one complaint about Thor, it would be that I could do without the love story. <laughs> like seriously, why does there have to be a love interest in every freaking movie? It it's not necessary. Despite what women think, guys are not that motivated by the opposite sex. We're much more motivated by other things than that. Okay, like, I, just, the love story just does not need to be in every damn film. Okay, but that being said, uh, Thor, get, Thor gets an 8 out of 10. I, I put it up there on the same level as, as films like, uh, you know, the Batman Begins, uh, The Dark Knight Rises. I I'll toss it up there with, uh, you know, also with films like the original Batman and Richard Donner's Superman that are classics. Uh, this is just an outstanding, outstanding film. Okay, now next time I'm with you, we are going to go ahead and talk about Captain America, the first Avenger. Uh, so until then, remember, Civil War is coming and Carnage is right around the corner.